What's up, YouTube? This is your girl, Megan. Welcome back to the Hood Astro Queen. To all of my returning subscribers, but if this is your first time joining me on today, be sure to hit that subscribe button on your way in, okay? Because you know you want to. So today I am coming to you guys once more with another celebrity birth chart reading. And when I say celebrity, I use that word very loosely, okay? And uh, today we're going to be talking about Mano, the rapper, and his girlfriend Maggie. I'm going to take a look at their birth charts individually, as well as going over a few synastry aspects between the two. Now, just a brief overview. Mano is a New York-based rapper. He had a song called Hi Hater. I'm from Atlanta, okay? I grew up on Gucci Mane, Outkast, Ludacris, you know what I mean, uh, Rich Kids. I don't... I, you know, Travis Porter, I don't know him like that. I only know that one song. It was a flop to me. I really was, it wasn't my speed, not my style, okay? And I mean, to be honest, I really don't like New York rap, but that's neither here nor there, okay? But most recently, he's also been known as a cast member on Love and Hip Hop New York. And Maggie is an aspiring, and I mean aspiring, rapper or no, singer, excuse me, Singer slash entertainer slash model, drop dead gorgeous girl. I saw her music or I heard some of her music, watched the video. Not only had I never heard of it, I wasn't impressed. So she kind of got that going for her, but she was also on Love and Hip Hop New York with Mano. And so they're a couple, and I believe they've been a couple for a while now. And their relationship was, I guess you could say, consummated back when. Uh, she was shot actually in the New York Plaza, the Irving Plaza or whatever incident with Troy Ave. She was in the building and got hit by a stray bullet. Very unfortunate, traumatic experience for her. And because Mano was the reason why she was even out celebrating her birthday that night, he, according to Love and Hip Hop, kind of felt guilty about it. And ever since then, they've kind of just really grown very close and they've been together ever since now their relationship has very been has been very interesting excuse me to me just because I would see certain things Mano does have this reputation for being a player okay and I've seen certain interviews where she would be kind of pushing marriage or um, you know certain things on TV where she would be talking about marriage in his mind you could kind of tell wouldn't even own that you know what I mean the dynamics of their relationship it's kind of interesting to me. But then also, more recently, my good friend uh, Leah, okay, she has a channel called Live with Leah. I'm going to link her channel in the description box below. She does tarot readings, by the way, $20. And she's amazing, an amazing person. And she's really good at what she does, okay? She, she knows her shit. So she did a reading on their relationship, Maggie and Mano. And it was an awesome reading. However, Maggie was not pleased. Now, ask me how Maggie knows about like the occult sector of YouTube. I don't know. But she reaches out to Leah with some not so nice words uh, about her video and her reading and kind of continued to what I would call attempt to bully and badger Leah on her own interpretation like of the reading, which was very, very odd to me. And it kind of made me want to take a look at Maggie's chart even more because that was just, that was just real weird. It was very, very weird. And, um, yeah, so we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start this reading, shall we? So Mr. Mayna was born on August 30th, 1973 which makes him a Virgo sun, Libra moon, okay? Now, he has a lot of Libra energy, actually, because he has a stellium. His moon is conjoined to his Venus, as well as his Uranus, as well as his Pluto. So he's a strong Libra, okay? He might even act more like a Libra than a Virgo in certain ways. Now, right off rip, especially that, Libra or Venus in Libra in a man's chart can make for a womanizer, which was no surprise to me because 
he does have a reputation for being a ladies man. Okay. He's been linked to a lot of women and he, he's actually very open about this. I have even seen him in interviews bragging about being a player bragging about, you know what I'm saying? His finesse, his whatever. And to me, it doesn't seem like his relationship has kind of curbed that appetite, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So there's that. But then also specifically with his Venus being conjoined to his Uranus further kind of illustrates this theme of him needing uh, freedom because Uranus is the planet of freedom. It's the planet of individuality, rebellion. Right. And a lot of times Venus in aspects to Uranus can produce a person who is not necessarily a good fit should I say for like the more traditional style relationships these people definitely crave a lot of flexibility and a lot of freedom you know or or they still like their individuality you know what I mean even while in relationships so he's definitely a ladies man and it's with that V because Venus is dignified in Libra right it, it does rule Libra as well as Taurus and a lot of times, especially in a male's chart, this could deal with a man who, because there's this need for beauty, this appreciation for beauty, right? Mano probably is the type to like nice things, right? He likes nice things, likes nice people. I bet you if you walked into his house, like his house is decorated nicely. He likes to surround himself by like nice, lavish things and women are kind of an extension of that, right? You like to be surrounded by beautiful women, pretty faces, right? Viewing women as like art, but almost even like as objects, especially with his Venus in, um, or his Uranus in uh, Libra rather. There could be this sense of entitlement when it comes to women. However, he is a smooth operator with this setup. Moon conjoined to Venus, particularly, especially in the sign of Libra, can produce a man who is very suave, you know what I'm saying? Very charming, even to the outside world, as Moon does govern your reputation, you know? And Mano does have that reputation for being a very, um, like, charismatic person. He seems like a very fun person to have a conversation with, even, like, on his interviews. Like, he's always very, like easygoing and and fun and you know what I mean engaging entertaining and I can definitely see how you know he can be very charming you know what I mean and he can attract women because he has this kind of like je ne sais quoi about him and that's very much moon conjoined Venus now on the negative side especially with his uh Pluto in Libra also this could create somebody who is very strategic okay so he's not this like charismatic Mr. Smooth guy by chance there's often a lot of strategy and a lot of um you know beforehand like calculation that goes into this and this could even point towards somebody who is very calculative about even the relationships that they decide to enter in the type of women they decide to you know be around and everything is all about, it's all about strategy, um, which can be, I mean, depending on how you want to look at it, it can be, it can be good, but it can also be very bad and kind of misleading and have this like kind of insidious or sinister kind of undertone to it. And especially with this Pluto thrown into the mix, he could absolutely attract women who attempt to change this about him he can attract partners who get with him because they like you know they like him right they fall in love with his charm and his machismo or whatever it is he has going on but over time they try to you know conform him or kind of tweak him and mold him into what they want him to be which with this uh, Pluto and Libra is not likely to happen. He also is a Taurus Mars and, you know, Taurus is very stubborn. Now his moon is squaring his Saturn, which is conjoined to his South node and cancer. 
And this get up can be interpreted as Mayno being involved with lots of women, but incapable of forming um, emotional bonds. There's this disability or inability rather to form long lasting emotional attachments to women. And because Saturn is the planet of karma, it's the planet of like debt, like karmic debt from previous lives or past lives. There could be this kind of, or even early in life, there could have been a wound, emotional wounds suffered most likely from childhood, especially with Pluto um, squaring Saturn. There could be this theme of like, like uh, maybe he, I don't know what his relationship with his mom is like, but there could have been a strained relationship with the mother, a strained relationship at home, um, some sort of letdown, even abuse. Uh, it's something to where it, it kind of wounded his ability to really connect, especially with women on a very deep interpersonal, emotional level. And Saturn and Cancer, a lot of times, uh, especially South Nodes, uh, Cancer South Nodes, tend to have a tendency uh, to be loners, especially being a Capricorn North Node. You came into this life to be a, a loner. And so I don't, for that reason, I don't see him being like your stereotypical family guy. You know what I mean? Get married, uh, have a whole bunch of babies right off into the sunset, pick one woman, be with her forever. Uh, especially like on the relationship tip with Mayno being a Capricorn North Node, he's kind of going to always be put in positions to where he's either going to be let down or things don't really work out. Um, I don't see him being like a, you know, standard, um, you know, a traditional family man. He wasn't put here in his lifetime to do that. So that kind of doesn't help things. But then also, uh, taking it back to there being like a karmic issue involving family, mo the mother and women, he could even view women as a burden somewhat. And Maggie just so happens to have it. I'm kind of getting, getting ahead of myself, but her Venus and her Mars are in cancer in her Chiron. So first of all, I feel like this is a karmic relationship, a very karmic relationship. It's not by chance. But it also points towards there being, I would even argue, a bit of like a, a codependent type of situation going on to where he probably does feel burdened by her or feel res a, a deep sense of responsibility. Um, Saturn does also represent fear. So there could be even an element of fear or um, hesitation there as far as like being emotionally invested in the relationship. And with his Saturn being at the second degree, that number two deals with family. So it reinforces this issue of like family, this, this theme, like whether he came from a broken family or him being the type of person to not even really start a family of his own or be your traditional family guy. There's some type of issue there. Uh, it could even be like a fear of starting a family or something or getting really close to people. So, yeah, there's that. But then also speaking to the whole theme of like uh, obligation and duty, he's a Virgo sun and Mercury and Virgo is the sign of service, which is interesting because Maggie has a brother who is, I believe, like he's handicapped. He's in a wheelchair. I'm not really sure what his disability is, but Mayno does help out with, you know, her family. He helps out with her brother and I even saw like on Love and Hip Hop, he was very active, like very actively helping him. I think the brother lives with them, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure about the details, but Virgo is a sign of service. So he would absolutely be the type to, you know, help take care of people, even like on a, like a, a everyday need, like an everyday level, rather feeding people, um, administering aid. Virgo is a natural ruler of the sixth house, which does deal with health routine, uh, caring for people, right? That's why a lot of uh, sun in six house people tend to be doctors or have some type of profession in the 
medical field. So I don't think, um, I think that kind of falls right in line with just his personality, the nature of his personality. But deep down inside, I do feel like with his lunar nodal placements, there's this sense of um, just fear and pressure. And I wouldn't even be surprised if he kind of suffered from depression, like on a, um, you know, just like on a, like quietly, you know what I mean? Feeling like he has a lot of expectations and demands placed upon him, both by women or just in relationships, as well as even like in business. Libra is the natural rule of the seventh house, which deals with business partnerships. But as it pertains to relationships, yeah, yeah, no, he's he's no. His Uranus and Pluto are squaring his Saturn, uh, which deals with there being this sense like this teeter totter kind of thing where he kind of goes back and forth between wanting to be loyal, right? Wanting to be faithful and responsible, but then also wanting his to preserve his independence, wanting his liberation. So as a result, Mayno might even try his hand at regular relationships, kind of like the one he's in with Maggie or tries to conform for his partner, but will increasingly throughout his lifetime find it difficult to still be able to satisfy himself and his personal needs and that could lead to all kind of slip ups and you know cheating scandals and whatever and whatever because ultimately he it's that independence that he wants and there are going to be times where he feels very burdened so that taking it back to that theme of Saturn conjoined to his South Node and Cancer being very burdened um, by emotional relationships and expectations. And this is further supported with him being a sun square Neptune. His Neptune is at the fourth degree of Sagittarius. And this basically just, it makes him the type of person who's going to be liable to cheat. He's going to be a lifetime cheater. He's going to be a lifetime liar, especially with his Mercury square in Neptune. Okay. He's going to be the type of person who's, like I said, always needing freedom, especially with that Neptune and Sagittarius. Sagittarius is all about variety. Sagittarius is all about, you know, more. Okay, not the, the most, not the lesser in my pensy boy. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's going to be this natural hunger for a variety of women and a disdain for expectations being placed on him, right? But, you know... So there's that, like any woman who wants to be with him and Maggie, I know, I mean, I'm a nobody, but since you hitting up, you know, a cultist on YouTube, you know, just in case you watching this video, baby, you might need to change your expectations of him or just count the relationship out as far as a long-term situation is going to go. If you're not willing to deal with this, because, you know, it's not you per se, it's just, this is just who he is. And this is kind of who he's always going to be. His Venus is opposing his Chiron in Aries, which deals with him being very selfish with women, having a very short attention span. Okay, Aries is a highly sexual sign. And it kind of bolsters my point as far as him being or feeling entitled. You know what I mean? Very in, Feeling very entitled to women. He could also be the type to like the chase. You know what I mean? Even when he's in a, he, when he's in a relationship. Um, the type to thrive off of lots of sex. He can be a very physical man, um, very primal. So even with him being in a relationship, I highly doubt that he's not looking or checking out other women at the very least, or you know, at the very least, you know, um, honestly, just looking at his chart, I think he's just outright cheating. I don't think he's above cheating. Um, but there's that. <laughs> and then, with his Saturn being conjoined to his black moon Lilith, this actually makes him very controlling. And I see a lot of things in his chart um, that kind of support that theme of him being controlling, you know, his Pluto squaring his Saturn. But then also having Pluto and Libra makes you very, it, it can make one very, especially conjoined to his Venus. It makes him very um, kind of even obsessive when it comes to women. You know what I mean? Also, I forgot to, to uh, make this point. Pluto and Libra or Pluto in Libra can create somebody who 
feels obligated uh, to stay in a relationship despite not even wanting to be there, which kind of supports, like I said, this theme here of like him really being the type of person to not even like do well in monogamous relationships. But there's not it's not to say that he doesn't um, care for Maggie because I'll get into that with their synastry. But, um, yeah, it's a lot of duty and obligations felt on his part. But I also think he's very controlling uh, as well. Now, his son and Mercury are trining his wet moon Lilith, which makes him very picky and fault finding Um, could be the type to even come up with reasons for why he can't commit to a woman. You know what I mean? The type of like, look, see, you do see if you're going to be doing me like this, we can't even be together. If you're going to be doing me like, look, you can't be, you, hey, look, you act, look, you look, if you're going to act like that, you need to act like you want a man to come in. If you, you got to act like you want me, girl, because if you don't look, you know, very picky. Um, it can also make him very business minded, militaristic in the way that he runs his relationship. I know that when I was watching Leah's video, she was saying that he paid for her like, it was a hair company, a hair bundle company or something like that he paid for. It was kind of like really pushing her to make money. That's that Capricorn uh, North Node, especially uh, Black Moon Lilith conjoined to uh, his Capricorn North Node. Because that can make somebody all about money, all about business, all about status. And, you know, with him, um, with his Saturn being conjoined to his his South Node, that, that could even deal with him supporting her. You know what I mean? Like financially or helping out with her financially, which kind of adds to that theme of him kind of feeling burdened in that respect. So that's no surprise. And moving on to Maggie's chart, she is, well, she was born May 22nd, uh, 1991, which makes her a Gemini son. Her son, she's, she barely made it. Okay. She's, a cuss baby, but her son is at the zero degree of Gemini and she's a Virgo moon, which when I, I mean, looking at her being a Virgo moon makes a lot of things make sense because Virgo is inharmonious in, you know, the moon, like the moon doesn't like to be here. Okay. It's one of the more difficult moon placements and it can create somebody who is very, very, very insecure. Okay. Which makes me think about her reaching out to Leah um, to kind of like, I don't know, like, I guess argue her down about her interpretation of a public relationship. That is so Virgo moon, especially Virgo moon. Women can be highly insecure, very nitpicky. Um, like I said, fault finding. However, I will say this with her moon being conjoined to Mano's sun and Mercury, it makes it so that in a way I do feel like there, there is a connection there. Because he supports her emotionally, right? And she probably helps feed into his ego, you know, make him feel like a man. Um, to a certain degree, there's this level, like, it, he understands her and how she feels, you know what I mean? He understands her on an emotional level, like, as a woman. He gets her. And I think that's that bond um, between the two. So I will, I will say that. But she's very insecure and particularly as her reputation is concerned and she needs constant reassurance. And with her being a Taurus Mercury, I highly doubt that she likes in like depth. You know what I mean? She doesn't like going deep beneath the surface, which is probably another reason why she would take issue with certain like occult style um channels you know what I mean like with Leah analyzing the relationship from like a spiritual or a cultism standpoint Taurus is all about surface level knowledge it's all about um conformity it's all about the status quo therefore maybe if you were like an official news channel you know what I'm saying she'll probably be more willing or a lot less likely to challenge your standing on things. Taurus, rep Taurus respects authority. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, to be honest, just sidebar, it probably makes her a very boring person to have a conversation with unless her Gemini son like comes out to play. But yeah, so that's that on that. But then another thing that I noticed is 
her Venus and Mars are conjoined in the sign of Cancer. Venus is like Cancer. Ugh, Venus hates being in Cancer. Okay, Venus is in its detriment in the sign of Cancer, and honestly, in a woman's chart, it makes for a horrendous, horrendous relationship with men. You can attract womanizers. You can attract even woman beaters. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not saying may no beats her. I'm not even going to uh, open up those can of worms. I'm just saying that I wouldn't even be surprised if she's been in an abusive relationship or even, you know, abuse isn't just limited to physical. It could be emotionally. It can be mentally or, you know, in relationships to where men are looking to kind of manipulate her in a way or control her or keep her there's this element of control and somebody kind of yielding their will power their will over her um she can be involved in a lot of love hate relationships there's also a load of family issues that she has with her venus and mars she's a she's a cancer south node also venus mars and her chiron conjoined to her south node in cancer she has a, a shitload of family issues. I believe her mom passed away when she was a child. You know, she's the only one caring for her, her um, handicapped brother. So that's, that's a lot. That's a lot there. She has a lot of stuff going on. And it points towards her leaning on men for emotional support, like the man in her life, right? Which kind of bolsters uh, everything else in the chart, like in, in her chart and in, in his chart. I think she looks to Mano. For like, like I said, that emotional stability, which I think he, I think he probably provides, but he feels enslaved or kind of indebted by it. You know what I mean? But, um, oh, Mars and cancer and Cardi B, not for nothing, has her Mars and cancer. And this girl can't leave the blogs and YouTube. She loves running down on the YouTuber. Okay. God forbid you say something about her that she doesn't like. She's liable to sue. AKA Tasha K, you know what I mean? So uh, that's a very glaring similarity. These, and, and that, a lot of that is because, you know, um, Mars and Venus and Cancer people, definitely Cancer Mercury people, aren't really able to think objectively. These people are very biased because they think with their emotions. So they're not sitting back looking at, like, okay, well, you know, this YouTuber named Leah is doing a reading on me and, you know, okay, I'm going to take it with a grain of salt. Even if you feel like it's just so off the mark, they can't do, they, they, they literally physically can't do that. Like they have very visceral reactions, very knee jerk kind of reactions to things, very emotional, can be very hysterical, right? They have to respond to any and everything. And like I said, it's just hard from the, for them to come to remove their own personal feelings about a situation from it and come from an objective standpoint. So, Leah, if you're watching this, it's just it's, it's hopeless. Like like there's never going to be a point where she's like, you know what? Like such and such. I get it. That's your platform. Do what you do. Like it's do 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 do. Like, no, she's she's forever. And I think. You know, as more people report on her or if she were to ever become a bigger celebrity, I think it would become an increasingly larger problem, especially if there's press that she doesn't like. So just think Cardi B. Think Cardi B. Cardi B is a, a cancer Mars all day. There's also a fundamental kind of disagreement or misalignment of like their personal beliefs with his Mars squaring her Jupiter and Leo at the seventh degree. So she definitely wants to be a star. Okay. And that Leo represents the entertainment business. That seven is the number of like Neptune, so to speak. So she definitely wants to be in the industry. However, he could be the type to not really be enthused about that. You know what I'm saying? Her being a singer or entertainer or whatever. Um, Especially Mars Taurus men tend to be, um, they like, they kind of take like this primitive kind of caveman approach to women. Um, they kind of enjoy their women to be, I don't want to say seen and not heard, but I'm going to say seen and not heard. Okay. They collect trophy, trophy women. They're known for collecting trophy wives and kind of being, um, like I said, very much status quo and superficial in the way that they can view um, women, relationships, um, their drives, you know what I mean? 
And also, I forgot to mention this earlier, but Maggie's Mercury is also squaring her uh, Jupiter and Leo, which can explain her being very much like egocentric uh, and taking it back to the whole situation where she got really bit out of shape about that tarot reading like her feeling like because Leo loves but it only loves positive attention right positive reinforcement their ego can absolutely um, get in the way of things and with Mercury being all about communication and the way that you interact with others there's this tendency to have your ego get in the way especially when somebody brings something to you that you don't like that doesn't put you in the best light or that you feel kind of you know isn't isn't correct you know what I mean so there's that I mean and honestly it could be kind of a narcissism a narcissistic kind of aspect depending on what's going on in the rest of the chart and finally Maggie and Mano's Venuses are squaring one another and Venus is such an important planet because it's the planet of your love style your love language so even though maybe on like an emotional level, I feel like there's a connection there. The way these two go about expressing uh, their love for one another, right? The, the way these two conduct themselves, probably even within the relationship, are two completely different things. So with her Venus being in cancer, she's probably very needy, very con- all-consuming, you know what I mean? Emotional. She needs lots of emotional reassurance. Um, oh, especially with it being conjoined to his south node, right? And his Saturn, it's probably, it can be a bit much. He can kind of feel a little closed in and like trapped <laughs> at times, you know, she could probably even be very wishy-washy, very moody, um, whiny, complaining, you know what I'm saying? But then also he could be the type to be very much, um, uh, like I said, aggressive, even aggressive in his style of relationships, uh, forceful and very strategic. You know what I mean? He could even take on the identity of the relationship, which adds to this theme of their being like this kind of codependent thing going on. And, um, regardless as to whether she, I don't, you know, she's aware of it or not. I think there's, um, I'm not going to say he's unhappy, but I feel like this relationship does come with a price for him. You know what I mean? So, yeah, all in all, I mean, I, there are other aspects, but this video is long enough. I, I mean, I, the relationship could go either way, but I will say that long term, unless she kind of redefines what she thinks her relationship with him is going to look like long term. I don't see it lasting. And that's just my personal opinion. So, yeah. With that being said, be sure to drop a comment down below. Um, and make sure you practice unconditional self-love so that you can love others. And until the next video, y'all, I holla.